Do you ever find yourself wandering through the supermarket insanely overwhelmed by the thousands of products that you see there and not exactly sure what rubric you could use to just understand what to eat? I'm Hannah Mason, Vitality Coach, and in today's Spark, we're going to explore seeking out the density. I have of living in a foreign country is that every time I come back to the United States, I get to look at it a little bit from an outsider's perspective, which is really neat because I get to learn about what's important to me and what I value rather than just necessarily following the fads as they slowly ease into my life. I get to see fads suddenly explode into my, before my eyes because I see them for the first time in a massive way all at once. And that's been happening over the past uh, decade and a half where I've been living in Israel and every summer we come back here where I am right now to Connecticut and I'll go to the market to go grocery shopping. And every single time there's some new food fad, low fat, low carb, keto, this, that, the other, you know, then it's like high fat, then it's this, then it's the other. And it's so confusing, I would imagine, for people going to the grocery store on a daily basis, bombarded by so much messaging. And it can be really confusing to know what to look for, especially since last year's fad becomes this year's uh, trash. And then this year's trash 10 years later suddenly becomes that year's fad. And it's like, who do you listen to you? And what do you do? So there's one piece of, of knowing that I think we can all intuitively connect to. And I'd like to share with you today. And that is something really, really simple. And it's a concept called nutrient density. So in this case, when I talk about nutrients, I'm talking about the most important nutrients that you need to live. And we have two different categories of nutrients. So we have what are called macronutrients, the big stuff, right? The stuff people tend to talk about, fat, protein, and carbohydrate. But then you have all of these micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, specific kinds of certain fatty acids, um, phytonutrients, phytochemicals, uh, antioxidants, all sorts of things like that. And all of those base micronutrients tend to be the things that differentiate people who live long, healthy, vital lives from those who are really struggling. So when you're eating food, or when you're shopping for food, what you want to look for is food that is nutrient dense, okay? So for example, if you're walking down the produce aisle and you're debating between an apple and blueberries, so both of them are really good for you. They've both got tons of fiber and water and sugar and vitamins and minerals and all sorts of stuff. But if you look at the blueberries, you can just tell from their color and how pungent it is and from their flavor and how really good blueberries will just burst with flavor in your mouth, that's a pretty good indication to you. Just as a normal human being, you don't need to be a scientist or a rocket scientist or do tons of research to just intuitively know there's something really magical about blueberries in our palate's experience of them because they're so incredibly rich in all of these micronutrients. Now, mind you, the old adage that an apple a day keeps the doctor away is pretty spot on for all sorts of reasons. So I don't want to downgrade the apple. But now let's make it a little bit easier and say you're walking down the supermarket and you're debating between an apple and a chocolate bar. And there are those who like to tell you that, well, this is sugar and this is sugar, so it's all the same. But if you actually look at what's going on in the apple versus the chocolate bar, the apple is like, looks like real food, right? And the chocolate bar, you kind of have to go to the ingredient to start figuring out what are all these dextroses and maltoses and hydrogenated and all these words like you don't even understand, right? And when you're talking about micronutrients, most chocolate bars on the micronutrient level have something close to zero, right? Where apples like ton plus an apple is a complete food, just as it was made in nature, just ready for us to be able to process and digest, right? Like you just intuitively know that. You know that an apple is better for you than a chocolate bar. 
Where it gets a little bit more confusing is you're going down the aisle and you're debating between an apple and a chicken breast, right? And people tell you chicken, it's white meat, and the breast is the least fatty part, and there's no problem, right? Eat the chicken because it's so good for you. And now here's my core question. On a micronutrient level, how many micronutrients are hanging out in that chicken versus how many micronutrients are hanging out in that apple? And as soon as you start talking on that level, vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients and antioxidants, the chicken just loses big time. What chicken has a ton of is protein, and even a chicken breast still has a ton of fat. And we need protein on our diets, and we need fat in our diets, but like not that much, right? And the challenge with animal protein and animal fat is that our bodies tend to respond to these foods by pumping up a tremendous amount of inflammation. The inflammatory markers in the blood go up within hours of eating an animal product, whereas the inflammatory markers go down after eating plant products. So if you're trying to prevent diabetes or manage diabetes, you're going to do so much better eating whole grains. People might tell you, oh, carbs are bad for you. Not true. If you eat whole grains, your diabetic markers and your chances of getting diabetes go down. If you eat whole fruits and vegetables, down. What causes diabetes is the same thing that sustains diabetes, and that is inflammation in the blood vessels. And what causes inflammation is eating animal products. So that can be like kind of confusing for people because they're like, wait, but I don't understand. A diabetic, when they eat a piece of fruit, their blood sugar goes through the roof. But the question is, why did their blood sugar go through the roof? The reason is they're eating highly inflammatory foods and they're not eating the anti-inflammatory foods, right? Part of what makes produce so anti-inflammatory is because it's got all of these micronutrients that really help us to grow and thrive, but they're also chock full of fiber. Plant foods are so full of fiber and that fiber feeds all the little bacteria hanging around in our gut. And that bacteria are like, mm, 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 that was so good. You know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to give you lots of anti-inflammatory stuff and lots of protective chemicals and all this good stuff just to say thank you for mm, 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 feeding me all that good fiber. Yum, yum, right? So that's like awesome. That's what happens when we eat plant foods. And if someone who's diabetic goes on an all plant food diet, amazing things happen. And that's what I want to talk about in tomorrow's video. What happens to diabetics who go on a carbohydrate intense diet? In the meantime, if you are dealing with an inflammatory disease such as diabetes or heart disease or arthritis, and you're trying to figure out like what you can do to take care of your body, or maybe you kind of already have an idea of what to do, but you need someone to help guide you through that process to set audacious goals and to manifest them and to deal with all that clutter you have in your head that might be getting in your way, a vitality coach might just be what you need. Why don't you set up a discovery session with me? You can send me a message here on Facebook or sign up directly on my website at hannamason.com. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful day. Want to experience more clarity, vibrance, and joy in your life? Book a discovery session with Hannah at hannamason.com slash joy.